It's my feel good breakfast show. If you've been watching season two of Those Who Can't, you'll understand why the show has become so popular and raved about among South African viewers. Following its first season in 2012, the show is back to follow the staff of a rather dysfunctional private school where the grown-ups are in fact as mature as the 12-year-olds. Now, you may recognize two of the lead actors who are with us today in studio, Grant Swanby and Robin Scott. Welcome to Expresso. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah, well, before we get talking to you, I just want to show you a quick preview of those who can't. Okay, good people. I want to go around the room and for everyone to share a memory of old Mrs. Femdom. The more detailed and specific, the better. Right? Can we do that? Of course. It's, it's the least we can do. No, oh, it's a beautiful idea. A fitting tribute to a fine lady. It's what old Mrs. Fenter would have wanted. Who's old Mrs. Fenter? I know there's a young Mrs. Fenter, teaches PE, six fingers on one hand, but I had no idea there was an old Mrs. Fenter. No clue. Absolutely no clue. You know, I should know this. It will come back to me. Old Mrs. Fenter. Oh my goodness, it's absolutely hilarious. Now, Robin, <laughs> can you tell me, you know, a little bit what do you think it is that makes this show so popular? I think, you know, we're very, very proud of the show. And I think what's happened with the comedy is that it's, firstly, it's, it's slightly mad. I think people love the mockumentary feel of it. You know, the, 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 a lot of the characters, we speak directly to camera. Um, and, you know, audiences know that now with a lot of the comedies, the American comedies and the British comedies. So they know that genre. And I think they really love that genre and the madness of it. Yeah, I think we had so much fun as well doing it. And I think that yeah. translates quite well on screen because yeah. we ended Lots up in hysterics of... most of the time. So. Nonsense, nonsense. <laughs> Tell me a little bit more about the chemistry, about the characters. Well, you know, us as actors, which is great. A lot of us knew each other before and obviously from the first series. So there was a natural rapport. So we were able to kind of make funny with, you know, all the time. We were, as I said, to, I mean, we had to stop filming sometimes because we were laughing shocking. so much shocking. that we couldn't the actually carry on. behaviour was absolutely on. shocking. Your producers were probably having a field day. Well, Tearing, yeah. going great. <laughs> going <laughs> there, <laughs> and I'm terrible. I, I can't. And you know, and, and, and also because you're coming, sorry, Granty, we, we don't even talk over each other. Um, but when you come back to do a second season, the characters are in you. Yes. You know the characters. You're not building those characters up. You're not having to do that character study. They're there. It allows for more play and more acting and more fun. And, and then that's when the trouble starts, you see. I want to know from you, so you play the secretary. Mm. Is there anyone in particular that you're channeling or a couple of people you draw your inspiration she from? She is absolutely evil, <laughs> wicked, manipulative. You never, ever know when Marlena is telling the truth or not. Um, and she's got no social or moral understanding. She's a bit of a psychopath, really. <laughs> a bit of a psychopath. Yeah, yeah a little bit. Um, <laughs> she's a lot of fun to play. The part was written for me. So that means it's based well, on you. Um, <laughs> no, I don't know anyone like her. I did, though, in my research, go to the German school in, in Tambuskloof, and I asked the lovely German secretary if it'd be all right, because Malena has a little Austrian-German background. It'd be all right if I just watched her for a little bit. And I, she was very confused. She didn't know what I was going on about. I tried to explain to her I'm playing a part of the secretary and I sat in her, <laughs> next to her in her little secretary office just staring at her. I think she was very comfortable. <laughs> that was about the... <laughs> she was just, just staring like a freak out. Are you going to be much longer? Or <laughs> it's only been three days now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, watching everything <laughs> she does. So you've I'm definitely done was. your research. You guys yeah, are absolutely you hilarious. Must, you must do research. Do you guys get along behind the scenes? What's it like? Behind the scenes is as crazy as in front of the camera because we all get on extremely well. So it's like, it's, it's crazy. They bring us all together and we just, I mean, it's fall about, you, fall you, about love. You have to, you have to create that family quite quickly and you're shooting 26 episodes in under three months. Once you're in that studio, it's just boom, boom, boom. Yeah, boom, and boom. I mean... And you need that, you know, that likeness. And so you become a family and you become very tight. 
very, very, yeah. very And you've quickly. got to sort of hit the ground running. It's not as if you have a lot of time for the rehearsals no, and getting into no. it. You've just got to go. Just I mean, we're it. generally not exactly like our characters, but are, uh, you know, really funny in our own sorts of ways. So hopefully we brought all of our little funny that we have inside of us to each of our roles. And is there a season three in the work? So we're very hopeful about it, and hopefully we'll hear from them soon. Well, oh, thank oh, you so much for joining us on Express. Thank you. Thank you guys for a lot of fun. Us. <laughs> <laughs> well, you two can catch season two of Those Who Can't tonight at 8 p.m. on SABC3.